Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. I want to talk with you today about a key to effective conversation. It is individualizing your approach. Think of someone who you consider to be a good conversationalist. Chances are that he or she uses a conversational style that's similar to your own. Whether your goal is to persuade, build a relationship, or just have fun, it helps to adapt to the other person's conversation style. That rarely requires you to subvert your essence so you can please your conversation partner. It mainly requires you to balance your needs and desires with your conversation partners. For example, let's say you're having a political conversation. Of course, only change your position if your conversation partner's ideas are convincing, but you hardly violate your essence to choose to make your arguments more fact or feeling-based. Well, here are the main ways you can individualize your conversations. More playful or more serious more fact-based or more feeling-based, more concise or more expansive. Some people enjoy that rat-a-tat of a quick exchange, while others prefer extended, reflective utterances, reflecting their priority. For example, most people's priorities lie among career, family, money, health, politics, and pleasure. If you're unsure of your conversation partner's priorities, listen to what they say early in a conversation. Also consider asking, what are you thinking about these days, and what are you looking forward to? No surprise, having at least part of your conversation focus on one of their priorities builds the relationship. But you might also learn something. That person has thought a lot about the priority issues, and so it likely has something to say of value about them. Another area of where you can adapt is being fact or feeling-centered. With some people, I'll cite facts and statistics and logical reasoning. With others, I'll focus on how it makes me and other people feel. I'll certainly try to anticipate how my statements will make my conversation partner feel. More transactional or more process. Some people like to get right down to getting something done. Other people, even if a transaction is the, is the purpose of the conversation, they value process, if only to calm down and build rapport before getting down to business. Be alert to your conversation partner's first words and body language. That can help you decide how quickly, if at all, to get transactional. With some clients, I spend the first three minutes in small talk. With others, just 10 seconds. Another area to adapt is being either more declarative or interrogatory. Most people like to be asked questions, but some people feel put on the spot. Monitor their, re monitor their reaction to your first query. Are they enthusiastic or minimalist? Is the body language get open, more open, or closed? And finally, should you curse? A number of my clients have said they like that I curse. It makes the conversation seem more human. Others, for example, some religious people, are offended. So I'll try a curse word and look for the reaction. If it's even just flat, I'll probably stop. But if it's a smile, I'm on safer ground to voice my, quote, potty mouth. Anyway, alas, it is far easier to list adaptations than to offer enough implement them. It does require getting out of your head and considering your conversation partner's wants and needs, and even more difficult to continue to do that as the conversation proceeds, especially if it gets heated. But to the extent you can, flexing your communication style to accommodate your conversation partners will make your conversation more effective and more pleasant. In any event, I thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemco. I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments and especially like it if you hit the share button below. Share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.